Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot. First of all, I'll, I'll thank uh, Sashika. And I did this yesterday, the presentation. Uh, deepest condolences uh, to our friends in Sri Lanka. So uh, having said that, let me start off with this presentation. Uh, we did this a little bit of uh, thing about yesterday, saying that what has OCBC Bank done in terms of platforms to ecosystems? Today, what we will focus more on is uh, about the, the path that we took right from uh, being efficient to being external, uh, to, to expose externalities. So that's what we will be talking about. To dig a little deeper into it, I'll just give a little introduction about myself, so like, rightly pointed out. So I drive the API initiatives for the consumer banking divisions across its region. Uh, region essentially covers around 18 countries that we take off, and we sort of design and implement API solutions. And we've got around 110 plus APIs today out in the market. And we've been talking to uh, multiple partners across uh, government agencies and fintech partners to start uh, uh, using our APIs predominantly. So that's a little introduction about what our API portal does today. Yep. OK. So sure. uh, I'll, I'll just talk about these things briefly, right? So it starts about what, 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 what is the thought process behind uh, linear flow to network flow? And then I also will talk a little bit about fundamental to transformative shift on the organization level and scalable gatekeeping. So this is something that we learned through the process. So OCBC Bank, per se, we started this journey right back in 2016. So we were the first bank to start off this journey, uh, and we're, uh, rightly so, we're proud of that, saying that Southeast Asia, we're the first bank to come, out, come out with open banking solutions. So how, what we have a very interesting concept called the scalable gatekeeping. We'll talk a little bit more on that. And then uh, efficiency, fundamental redesign, and scaling. And then the triumvirate of technology distribution and content. But I, I wanted to actually ask for a question, but now that we are in a parliament, so, so that, that there'll be an eyes and nays. So we could typically talk about, so okay, this is completely off open banking. So everyone would have seen a horse gallop, for sure. So when in a horse gallops, does all the four legs is up in the air or no? The eyes can raise their hands now. Anyone says yes? We just have one eyes, OK. And the nays, should I say one, OK? <laughs> OK, so the reason why I'm asking this question is um, I will come to that at, at the end, So, which is kind of tangentiates towards that the triumvirate of technology distribution and, and uh, content that I'm talking about. OK, so what if we talk about uh, linear flow and network flow, right? So the boundaries have started to fade. So I gave this example yesterday about OCBC Home, One Advisor. So the One Advisor is essentially a mortgage platform essentially trying to give you an advice in terms of your affordability to actually make a purchase of a house and right from the journey, beginning, beginning of your view, uh, uh, having that thought process of buying a home to uh, your final delivery and handing over the keys. That's the entire journey mapping that we're talking about. So why is it very important, right? So it's, it's very important today because banking customers or for that matter customers in general today have let banks to be a part of their non-banking journeys, so to speak. So in that process, can we sort of maintain that edge that we have over other banks or over other fintech partners is a question which lingers in everybody's mind. So I, I was having a little bit of a chat with uh, some of my friends uh, yesterday and today as well. So we were saying, where is that edge that we're losing? So we're losing that edge on the transactional abilities that the customer does, which is the small ticket items. So not necessarily in the big ones, which is, if it's a million buck and above, no one cares. We haven't touched the fintech partner yet. But having said that, that they are being working on it right now. But the transactional items, we are losing an edge, and that's quite evident from that. But if we continue to lose that edge, that, that is, is a starting point for us to start losing the, the entire value chain. So that we understand, we realize, uh, and the openness for the customers to let us inside their, their, their entire life cycle also is a, is a boon for us to actually start creating journeys around that. So that's where I talk about what is a linear flow versus a sort of a networked flow wherein offline activities, non-banking activities, banks can still be a part of it. I, uh, during this course of the presentation, I will take a pause at multiple st stages so that you can feel free to add questions, feedback, inputs, anything for that matter. Yep, so if you guys have some questions, just feel free to interrupt me at any given point in time, and I will always answer those questions. Yep. Yep. 
so this gave rise to our internal th thought process of why should we go behind APIs, right? So why, why should I be very aggressive about APIs and curate use cases? Not necessarily the number, like right, you rightly mentioned. The numbers are, are good to have, but can you curate interesting use cases which you can take to market, which will really have the customer buy? So that is the thing that we've been thinking about. And then ha that actually led to a transformative shift in our business specifically. Okay. So, so this is the thing that uh, we've tried to sort of map out and say, okay, as a journey, things that we need to, to look at, or rather we are looking at, at as a bank today. So one starts with ecosystem driven. I, for the ones who were yesterday, you would have seen me present the ecosystem portion of it, how we, uh, we pivoted from sort of what, what we do today to an ecosystem model. The next one is more service orientation and then experience driven, which is more an unified sort of an experience across different channels, different third parties, et cetera, et cetera. So we talk about, yes, new platforms to achieve scales. So we, again, uh, this has been done dime a dozen, right? So we talk about uh, a happy interface. So APIs are not necessarily APIs anymore. They are more value proposition interfaces. So we call it VPIs specifically. And then we talk about uh, how do we sort of curate use cases now that we have the APIs in place, the individual APIs, all the API products and packages specifically, how to curate? So what we do is we, we go out to the market, talk to the partners, be it government agencies or for that matter, fintech partners specifically. And uh, the, again, most of our relationships has been with government agencies. Today, if you look at CPF and IRAS, so we have our APIs plugged into it and that's made a lot of improvement for us over a period of time. And in terms of metrics, uh, when I mean IRAS, it's the whole world. It's the whole, thing, whole of Singapore. So that's using our APIs today, and we, we're quite proud about it. And what is uh, the results of it are quite significant after that. Yep. So business model starts evolving around that in terms of curation. So what necessarily we could do in terms of understanding the customer and trying to sort of give a value proposition at that uh, particular pain point. <clears throat> and any existing consumer motivations that we have specifically, so uh, motivations could be multiple things, right from user experiences, anything that uh, talks about affordability and repeat purchases, which, which essentially talks about our journey on the, the one advisor portion, the IRAS portion, the CPF portion, and for that matter, uh, uh, quite, quite a few other APIs that we are trying to build right now as we speak around card issuance as an API uh, and, and quite a few uh, thereafter, yeah? Then comes, yeah the slingshot opportunities that we talk about. So this, this is essentially, it's, it's a moving target for us at the end of the day. So things happen. You fail sometimes, you win sometimes. If you win, can you win better? If you do something good right now, can you do it better? So that's the slingshot opportunities that we talk about. So this happens in every single work stream that we talk about, that we have, and every single ecosystems that we've mapped today, be it right from travel to mortgage to to your car loans, whatever it is, the entire journey, we're looking for better, better, better opportunities. That's the slingshot opportunities that I talk about. And we're trying to map out and any curation of use cases that our product managers, or journey managers do today gets fitted, fit rightly into that uh, particular portion. And what's the big objective, right? <laughs> the big objective is uh, can we sort of orchestrate this ecosystem? So that's the big objective that we have. And once we sort of orchestrate the big ecosystem that we have with our APIs and our products and solutions and the partner network, so that's the sweet spot that we want to be in. So that's the bigger objective that we're looking at. So specifically talking about the fundamental shift in terms of the transformation thought process that we have today. I'll take a pause here. Any questions, feedbacks, inputs? Cool. Yeah, so, so this, this is the concept that um, we, we sort of tried to map out over the over a period of time and we said, okay, how do we scalably gatekeep and how do we unlock the spare capacity that we have, right? So some of you might have had seen this slide in multiple forms of factors that we talk about a different spectrum, right? So we have a wide spectrum when it, when it comes to marketplace banking versus open banking. Most of the banks, so to speak, financial services as it is, where are they seated in? The spectrum is quite huge. We are still curating. We are handpicking customers, we are handpicking merchants, partners to talk about. Are we in this spectrum? Most of them, the answer is no. 
But are we working towards this? The, and the answer is yes. And it's a resounding yes. So we, we are working towards that thing. So this is happening currently. But this has got its own limitations, right? So when it comes to handpick, do we have the resources to go for it? Do we have the resources to curate use cases? Might be. The answer is no, because we are not. Uh, we, we want those developers to come up with with specific use cases. We want the fintech partners to come up with use cases and say, "Hey, this is something that I could do out of this." But are you ready for it? So then, today, the knock on the door happens here, and we decide whether to let them in or no. But tomorrow, it will move towards here, wherein the doors are open. You guys come, pick what you want, do what you want, just get it out in the market, and make sure that my customer base increases. That's my underlying objective, right? My underlying objective is to get there. I'm trying to sort of orchestrate the entire ecosystem in a way that will benefit me as a bank at the end of the day. So this is the wide spectrum that I was talking about. <clears throat> then the squarely, the definition of open banking is all over the place, right? So right now, and everybody understands in different ways. But is there a way that we can understand it better? Yes, we understand it better like this. We're in completely open, come, build, go deploy, and show to the, show to the world. So that's, that's the way that everyone is headed towards, and we are, we are no different, and we are headed towards there. Yeah. Again, a pause, a moment here. Any questions, feedback? Yep. Hi, uh, my name is Ravi. Uh, you talk about curation of third-party providers by FIs, and what are the guidelines that FI uses to choose these third-party providers? Given Can a be a little louder, a little louder, please? Yeah, now what are the guidelines that FI uses to choose, curate these third-party providers? Guidelines. Guidelines. Guidelines, okay. So uh, this, so we, uh, today, like you rightly said, we have thousands of FIs uh, or FinTech partners who are knocking on the door, but we don't let anyone and everyone today. Reason being, as a bank, we're conservative in terms of what is the use case that we want to go out in the market. Is it even val val value or, or worth? or the effort that we actually put in. It's commitment of resources, money, everything, and, and with anything and everything. So we don't do anything and everything. So that's where the strategic focus that we've had more towards a B2B2C of an approach, so which is essentially we talk to enterprises, be it CPF, IRS, or anything for that matter. We build solutions, and that, that cascades more into customers. Having said that, we are moving as a guideline. We're pivoting. So like I said, better of the same, things that we want to do more, so which is essentially we're talking about if there is a fintech partner out there, is that a, is that a worthy use case that we could go to market with? So that's something that we are talking to. And is it really worth the effort? That's the broader sort of guidelines. Then necessarily it, it pivots down to more of your technical guidelines and so to, all those other things will start following it. But a broader sense, today as we speak, we're looking at value creation and even if, is it even worth the effort that we want to take? So that's the strategy that, that we're trying to sort of spin out. Thanks for that question. Any, any other questions? OK. Cool. So this um, so efficiency, everyone talks about it. <clears throat> Fundamental redesign, also everyone talks about it. And scaling, not yet. Not yet, because most of the people are talking about use cases, curation. Yes, I'm able to curate the use cases, but am I, am I able to scale it from there? Because most of the uh, use cases that is live today from all, the, all over the world is more like, it is a pressworthy material, it's out there, but uh, the real usage of customers is still a question. So we, we've been seeing sort of a little bit of a, 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 a decline in terms of customer usage, also in terms of other APIs that we're talking about, which goes directly to the FinTech partners that we, that we have. So in this uh, thought process, the way that we sort of fit into different pillars is, we start off with more of the same, better of the same. That becomes efficiency. That's the first one that we talk about, which essentially is your sort of internal APIs that you sort of connect with each other and try to make your internal process efficient so that you can start talking about externally. So that's the first point that we talk about. From that evolves the economies and the evolution. And the core of everything is your faster turnaround, which is your agility, so to speak. So that becomes your, your, your edge when it comes through, and that will eventually start leading into your externalities. So when I mean externalities, it's more uh, monetization, which you could typically sort of try to create an economic value. And the entire process, uh, I'll just take you back one step to the point that I was mentioning on 
orchestrating the ecosystem. So this will essentially sort of orchestrate the entire ecosystem in a way it will start running an engine on its own, the better of its own. So once that happens, your, your revenue will start cl clocking in automatically. The use cases will start generating automatically. This, in essence, is an inverse of your innovation model that you have, that you've been tried and tested over a period of time. So that, that's what we talk about. Again, uh, taking one step on partnerships, your questions on guidelines, it goes with purposeful power partnerships. So that's our bigger picture that we talk about. It makes sense for us, then go ahead and do it. Skills development, you all would have seen our CBC bank is out there in the open. We're committing around $10 million for upskilling most of our employees today as we speak. So uh, upskilling is across work streams from agile, agile development to APIs to artificial intelligence to whatnot. So that's a commitment that we have. And in a previous conference, I spoke about uh, sustainable development, sustainable open banking. So this, this is the chain that we're talking about. We create sort of purposeful partnerships, internal skill development, and people-focused technology development. Once this happens, the chain becomes automatic, and then the entire loop starts continuing again and again. So that's the bigger picture that we're looking at to orchestrate the entire ecosystem. A any thoughts up there? Okay. I've got one question. Sure. How much of all this is internalized in, within IC, uh, OCBC? Sure. So um, I, I would want to give the credit uh, sorry, to our top management in 2016 to have that foresight saying that, hey, this is something that we need to do. But at that point in time, there were also uh, the, the, the lower level people, the, the working level people, the minions like us. So we started off with use cases. We were able to curate the use cases and uh, bring it up to the, to the top management. And then they had conviction on us to open it up. So that's the internalization that we see. But has it percolated downstream to across the bank? Maybe no, maybe not yet, not yet. But eventually that's happening. Through all these skill development and all those things that we're trying to do, we're trying to create that mind shift drastically from thinking about your product, thinking about the, that particular portion, instead of saying that, okay, think of journey managers. What can you do more? How can you own the ecosystem? How can you create new journeys? So that's the pro thought process that we're trying to create. Sorry, you have a question? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what we're trying to do right now. Thank you. Okay, now comes the interesting portion. I, unfortunately, I had just one word for a yes and one word for no, so that's a tie, specifically. <laughs> so, so what is this thing all about, right? So triumvirate of technology, distribution, and how, how many of you recognize this picture? No one? Two. Yes. You want to be louder? OK. So that's the picture taken by a British photographer called Mybridge. So what he wanted to understand was when the horse gallops, does all the four legs is up in the air or no? So that's the answer that he wanted to have. So he took four, 24 different frames of the same picture, and he created this first motion picture ever. And this is credited as the world's first motion picture, so to speak. So which is your evolution that has happened today in terms of videos that we have, in terms of YouTubes and, and whatnot, Netflix and whatnot that's coming through. That's called the Sally Gardner at the Gallup. So started off with technology refinement from that point, distribution, which I talk about ecosystem, and the use cases, content, which matters. When all these three come together, that's where the disruption happens. And open banking specifically is somewhere here. So we're still trying to sort of understand, refine, all those things that we're trying to do. And we're also trying to scramble our heads to saying, OK, we have, do we have use cases for it? What can we curate more? What can we think about more, et cetera, et cetera? And the ecosystem that we want to orchestrate over a period of time. When these three things meet, then the potential is among us. So that's where we are. And pretty much from my side, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So sorry, that's our uh, developer portal. So if you guys just want to see the scan, and you can start getting a feel of how it actually looks. Yeah? Thank you, Dilip. Do you have Luca here? Oh, yeah, we've got, we've got time for questions. Perfect. Um, just a quick question. Um, sure. With open banking, basically, it allows different banks to connect to third-party vendors to further enhance their services. 
So my question is, how do you then differentiate yourself since that you're no longer at the face of the application? So uh, the question today, uh, what is happening to banks? Are we trying to become more dumb pipes, just giving our core assets outside and then do the peop uh, people do the same things, right? So we, how do we want to differentiate is uh, through the use cases that we have. So the use cases wherein if you plug to a XYZ sort of a fintech partner, we want to slap themselves and say, hey, we are powered by OCBC. So that's, that, that's a way that we want to, want to go forward. And in terms of if you want to move first, you want to take the first advantage that, that comes to the market, the use cases matters a lot. So we're trying to pay more attention on the use cases specifically, which can be sort of a, a, a different ones for us. But having said that, most of the banks have sort of a commoditized offerings at the end of the day. So that becomes a little bit of a challenge for, to, for us to keep the edge. But that's where your continuous improvement comes in. So wherein you keep thinking about slingshot opportunities as and when it comes in, start picking it, and then strike the right chord. So that's, that's where we are right now. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. Someone has a question there. Hi. Oh, sorry. My, my question is uh, with regards to revenue. Uh, sure. as, as you partner with the ecosystem and, and really become just a back-end provider, like subsequent to his question, is your management concerned about where the future revenue is going to come from because everyone's taking a lunch? Yeah. So rightly uh, asked, um, today, when you were exposed, uh, Shashika was giving you a, a, a specific advice, right? So on saying that what is a metric specifically. If you don't grow your user base, then you are, you are not there yet. So we are looking at customer acquisitions. We want more customers to come through. So we want to serve them. Today we know that the ecosystem guys are the front phase of sorts. But when it comes to more banking so things, the, the real value ones, the million bucks and above, so which is where the back, back end is portioned there. So we are OK to let go of the transactional revenue which comes in to an extent, to an extent. But overall, from a portfolio level, only if it makes sense, we want to go in together. Yes, the threat is real in terms of those transactional things. But uh, let's look at a portfolio level to start making, making some sense out of it, is what we look at. Yeah. Sure. Hi. Hi. Um, so you, the whole ecosystem shift, and uh, I, I think this would be a major tech shift also for OCBC in general. So uh, along this journey of uh, starting to have an API-based uh, ecosystem, what was the biggest engineering challenge that you faced? So uh, very good question. So I was with uh, an MNC previously, an MNC bank previously. So they used to do everything on their own. So sort of the tech shift that has happened for a bank, regional bank like OCBC today, is we are trying to make everything internally right today as, as we speak. We used to have this habit of having vendors work for us, but now we are trying to focus more. So that's the tech shift which has also happened. Uh, having said that, yes, the, the challenge is we need to get the right resources in place, get the training up, and then start of, sort of scale up. So we are, we are work, working on a mixed model, wherein we have portion of it do from the vendor, then we sort of take the learnings from them, try to cascade it internally, and then start building additional solutions over it. It's again, goes back to the thought process of continuous improvement. We don't know everything, we, cannot, we don't profess to know everything, but we go out there, learn, and if the vendor uh, wants to work with us very closely, then we are more than happy to do that. Thanks. We've got time right. for one more question. Anyone? Are you staying uh, there? OK. Someone there. Sorry, you're next. <laughs> Amel. Hi. I just see on, on, on the internet that you are the first bank to do a Stanton digital account opening yep. for SMEs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for the regular customer like the B2C? That's right. Do you do it? Or so, do you plan to do it? So we already On have... The app, yeah. yeah. So we already have a digital account, instant account opening. So we call it the 360 account opening for consumers. For SMEs, not yet, sort of rightly mentioned. So that's something that we're working on, working on as we, as we speak. So there are some challenges around that portion. But yes, that the inclination is there, they want to do. And we also are working towards instant credit cards and loans and et cetera. So, so that's already public information already. So that, yeah, the answer is yes. We're working on those portions. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Dilip, are you going to stay uh, for, for lunch break? I, I will be. I'll be around. So feel free to 
to talk. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. A round of applause for Dilip.